Okay, you guys, our guest has worked with the best of the best in the voice of her business. She was a booth director at Abrams Artists and William Morris Endeavor. She is currently the project coordinator at Garden of Sound Audio, and she is also a private coach, and she is just flat out amazing. So we are so excited to get buzzed with the wonderful Rebecca Hargrove. Thank you. Thank you. Are the audience Good going crazy? Here. Big I audience do, I here today. Wow, we got oh a lot God. of people out there wow, today. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Toledo. <laughs> Put it there. Thank you so much for coming Thanks down. For being here. Be oh, Buzz my Weekly. pleasure. Sharing with us, having a little uh, cocktail, cocktail hour. Hey, don't you wish you were here with us? Or water. Um, it is 5 o'clock here. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> exactly. It's a uh, happy hour. <laughs> happy times. Um, I'm going to dive right in. Yes. Uh, because right now, I mean, I've known Rebecca for quite a few years now, and you know she's been doing a lot of really cool stuff, which we're going to get to. But I actually would like to know how you even got into the voiceover business. What did you do before, and how did you get into the VO biz? Um, well, what kind of got me started wanting to be in entertainment is that I was in student services in, while I was in college. Yeah. And um, so I got to work with a lot of different agencies on, on the you know with lecture circuit, uh, comedy, and what have you, special events or what have you. So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to move out to LA and be an agent. And I figured if you had an agent, it covered you for everything. Yeah. But when I moved out here, I was driving a beverage cart at a golf course in Santa Clarita, <laughs> which is probably one of the best jobs I've ever had. It sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> Outside all yeah. day. Right? Yeah. In a cart? I know. Full of beverage? So, Good tips. Alcohol? Yeah. Get down. <laughs> so, um, and it was right after, I moved out here right in the middle of the commercial strike in 2000. And um, I rented a room from a woman who was a manager and an actress. And that, once that was over, she was helping me get my resume out. And Judy Rich saw it and uh, had me in, but they didn't have anything at the time. Then I got another call saying, hey, we got an interview for you. She was actually just calling me at, just to have me come in and pull pictures every so often. Yeah. Oh. But uh, it just so happens an assistant position opened up for the uh, head of the voiceover department at TGI, which is now Vox. Nice. And... Um, I, I was literally just gotten off the golf course, and they said, "Come in." I said, "I, I, I I'm not dressed for an interview." Yeah. <laughs> Plus, I'm drunk. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, anyway, I don't care. Just come on in. Okay. All, all right. So I drove in to LA and met with Wes Stevens, and he gave me my first job. Uh, his wow. assistant did not show up for work or call uh, <laughs> after being at his house for a Super Bowl party. Wow. So that's how I got the voiceover. <laughs> that's crazy. Thank you, Wes Stevens. Right? <laughs> that's wild. We're a big fan of Wes. Yeah. Uh, so if you are wet, watching Wes, hi, buddy. Um, that's <laughs> really, really cool. So, so then you went from Vox. Well, I kind of traveled around a little bit. You did. Um, well, halfway through my time at TGI, it was. Uh, they eliminated the booth director position, and um, the other assistant and I took over the booth directing responsibilities. And I really liked being in the booth. It was a lot of fun to be a part of the creative process. Because yeah. there's not another area of representation where you do that. You're pretty much just handing out appointments. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, not to dismiss the work that they do, because no, they do important. good work. But, yeah, right, it's important. Right. but it is important. It's just that it's just you get a little bit more hands-on in voiceover. Mm -hmm. And I, like I said, I didn't even know voiceover existed on its own. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I, I went through on-camera commercials, I worked for a management company, casting director, and my last assistant job was for a lit, a TV lit agent. And I said, that's it, I'm a terrible <laughs> assistant, get me out of here. Get me out of here. <laughs> so that's when I, you know, I just happened to be working at APA at the time, which was in the same building as Abrams. APA. Mm -hmm. APA. So um, I interviewed with uh, Mark Quinn and Mark Measures, and uh, I ended up getting the job there and getting back into it, and I, I haven't looked back. Mm. That's fantastic. Two years, a little over two years there, I got the offer to go to William Morris, and, well, it, you can't turn that down. Yeah, no. Yeah. You were booth directing at William Morris for quite some time. Yeah. yeah I Helped was, them make uh, a lot of money, <laughs> right? Yes. Um, direct, <laughs> I like to think I did. <laughs> Rebecca knows how to direct those reads Her that actually get ratios booked. ratios of that booth were, yeah. Yeah, right? Exactly. It's, yeah. exactly. it's pretty cool. Um, wow, that's really neat. Well, let me ask you, as a booth director um, who has helped a lot of talent book work, um, how do you stay sharp and unstoppable trends actually help them book to get those reads? 